Washoe County Library System welcomes you to our weekly series, Art Town Tuesdays, presented by Nevada Historical Society. This afternoon's topic is the Nevada Barn Heritage with Jack Hirsch. My name is Samantha and I'm so happy to be here with you today. And now I would like to introduce Linda Burke with the Nevada Historical Society. Hello, I'm Linda Burke and I am the Vice President of the Docent Council, a volunteer group at the Nevada Historical Society, Nevada's oldest cultural institution, located on the University of Nevada Reno campus and now open Wednesday to the public and Thursday and Friday by appointment. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce Jack Hirsch, a fourth generation Nevadan, an award-winning photographer and a retired cartographic technician for the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology at UNR. Jack began photographing local historic barns in the 1990s when Reno's rapid development was changing the traditional rural landscape of the area. It is thanks to him that we have several ranch outbuildings at Bartley Ranch and a popular series of Nevada geolo geology calendars and tour guides. So here is Jack Hirsch and Nevada's barn heritage. Thanks everybody for joining me here this morning. And I'm gonna sort of have two different phases in this slideshow and uh, indeed Nevada barn heritage. Uh, I will then finish with the story of us rescuing those little buildings that are now at Bartley Ranch Park. And as Carol said, I have spent uh, many a time out in the, in the field exploring and taking photographs. And I was particularly inspired in the, in the mid 1990s, because all of us know that Reno was experiencing a, a big boom in, in building and development. And a lot of our local historical ranch sites were literally being bulldozed over. And so I observed this, saw these artifacts, these buildings uh, disappearing at a very rapid rate. So I grabbed cam cameras and just got out there, uh, literally knocked on doors and uh, was able to go on property and, and, and document, just photograph what was still there. And so I, the slideshow is just that, it's sort of an inventory of what I had seen uh, from the time frame of about 1995 to about 2005, and then maybe a few few since then. So it's not at all comprehensive. If I showed you every photo I took, we'd be here all day. This first slideshow, uh, I want to tell a little story. Uh, we we had moved the buildings to Bartley Ranch Park in May of 2004, and as uh, we noticed before, I published this little book. Uh, it's authored by myself and Lauren John, and it's a little booklet on the, my photos of historical local barns and sketches by Lauren. And it's a, a little guide, if you will. And uh, we uh, have this, we have had over the years, this book for sale at the Nevada Historical Society bookstore, the Sparks Heritage Museum, uh, Sundance bookstore. And one day in the mail, about a year after the buildings had been moved to Barley Ranch Park was this letter from this woman who lives in San Francisco and she and her husband had taken a bus trip to Sparks and they were staying at the Nugget and on their spare time they strolled down Victorian Avenue and they went into the Sparks Heritage Museum and they saw my little booklet but they had to catch the bus so they quickly bought the booklet ran and got on the bus and while she is riding back to San Francisco she's reading my little book and one of the very last pages in the book, I have this photograph of the buildings that we have on site at Bartley Ranch Park. And I have the brief description in their history. And she was flabbergasted because these buildings were her grandfather's ranch buildings. And so she write, wrote me this beautiful letter uh, expressing that she was almost in tears because she had no idea that they still existed. And so that started a friendship and we were uh, uh, writing back and forth and, and calling and she came up and visited and she brought this big family photo album of old photos. And as a child, she grew up in Reno and as a child, they'd go out to the ranch. And for some of you that don't know, this ranch site is where the Lazy Boy and Ethan Allen furniture stores are located now on South Virginia Street. 
So it's all developed now. But as a child, in I would say late 1940s and 1950s growing up, this was their grandparents. So they would go out the long trip from Reno out to that location in the South Meadows and she'd spend the weekend with her grandparents and she would play in the barn and around these outbuildings that are, that are now at Bartley Ranch Park. This is one of the photographs that was in that family photo album. And so I chose to use this as my title slide. And so I'm, I'm saying Joe Fredo Ranch circa 1950. And that, this is just my introductory photo. It's a selfie, if you will. And it's a, me just going out in the field and just simply documenting an, an inventory of photographs of what was existing like I said, from about 1995 to 2005. And so we're, we'll start out with Carson Valley. Carson Valley has a big inventory of timber frame barns. And this is the Schneider Ranch in, near Jack's Valley. And so what we had here in just general history, we have the big boom of the Comstock load and the mining at Virginia City. And so that really took off in the late 1850s, really boomed in the 1860s, 1870s started to dwindle in the 1880s, and by 1890s, uh, Virginia City was dying. Uh, the, the mines had played out. But by then, guess what town was booming? Reno, of course. But in the Carson Valley, Truckee Meadows, Eagle Valley, which is where Carson City is, even as far north into the Honey Lake Valley, and actually as far north up into Lassen County, Modoc County, and, and other areas in Nevada, uh, these big ranches sprang up with these huge timber frame barns and they were raising cattle and sheep and chickens and you name it and the big market was Virginia City. So the bulk of the photographs that I'm showing you today are these structures that date back to the Virginia City boom time frame. So you might just say a lot of these structures date back to the 18, uh, 1860, early 1860s. So here's the Sarman barn, and this is just defining the Nevada style of barn. We call it gable with wings. So you have a central gable with the wings off to the side. And there are a couple of advantages, you might say, for this style of barn for our location. Uh, in non-drought years in the past, we have had a lot of snowfall, and a structure of this type is very strong with large, heavy snowfalls, and it can shed the snow. And then we have very strong winds, and this style of structure also can shed the forces of wind, strong wind, those Washoe Zephyrs. And so this is a very strong style of barn to construct here in northern Nevada. This is the Holden Barn in Carson Valley. Same, that's the Carson Range, uh, same style, car, gable with wings. And this is a kind of my favorite marriage of, of a photograph with uh, old barns and geology. We have a big rock out here in the field. It's probably a, a glacial erratic, uh, meaning back in uh, maybe 10,000 years ago when it, the Carson Range was more glaciated, there might have been a big flash flood and a big wash of water came down the mountainside and brought this boulder, this huge boulder, all the way out into the field. So there's quite a story there, quite a dramatic story geologically just with that boulder. And then of course, the beautiful barn. This is the Bainberg Ranch in Carson Valley. This is a, a state park. The, the state park encompasses the house, the Dangberg house. And so if you haven't, it's a, a nice tour, the, the Dangberg house. Unfortunately, from my perspective, they did not include the barn in with the state park. And the barn is very uh, extraordinary. And so, however, the owners of the property still use the barn. So it is in use. and it, And We'll get on to other wagon stories later, but these are just some of the neat old hay wagons that were still parked out there behind the barn. And those are horse-drawn hay wagons. So Truckee Meadows. So this is my, uh, perhaps my favorite photo of all time. It's the little cover photo on my little barn book. And this was a, a barn that I, I uh, you might say, uh, it haunted me. It, uh, it was over on Valley Road. I stalked it. Uh, time and time again would drive by and I had always envisioned getting it with snow on the roof and so one time we got a snowfall and it was in 1998 and I swung by and got this shot and the by the time the sun had come around to the evening to get that nice light 
on the face of the barn, mo much of the snow had melted, but I got a little frosting of snow and, and was always very romanced by the old horse-drawn hay wagon. Uh, late 1800s, the Lewis family uh, moved in and they homesteaded, time frame from 1860s to approximately 1920. So about 60 years, a family would occupy and then the, there was the Italian uh, immigration into Reno, and the, the Italian move, movement came in around 1900 and, and 1940 time frame. a lot of Italians came in. So the Oliva family came in and bought this property, you know, pro, approximately 1920. And so then they occupied this ranch for a number of years. And then descendants of the Olivas, the, the Raffetto family, uh, then owned this property for many years. And it was the Raffettos that I made friends with, and uh, I knocked on their front door at their house just next door, and I politely asked them if I could go take photographs of the barn, and their reaction was, why in the heck would you want to take a picture of that old ugly old thing, and uh, which was quite comical, I thought, and so I present, after I got this photograph, I presented them a print of that photograph at the door, and their reaction was, oh my God, our barn is beautiful. But of course, the barn was torn down a few years later, and now there's a big apartment complex. So that's the reality. So moving on, uh, Mayberry Barn. This is out of the Aspen Glen Drive, out uh, west Mayberry Drive along the Truckee River. It would be impossible for me to take this photograph now because there are a bunch of large houses built right here. Uh, but I took this photograph around 2002, if I re recall correctly. And uh, I'm going to point out, in this view of this barn, you see the large opening down at the floor level at the ground level there's that large dark dark black that's an opening a doorway that is not original to this barn that would have originally been solid and the opening would have been way up at the gable there would have been a hinged door and it would have flopped down and they would load hay and we're going to talk more about that a little later but in modern uh, adaptive uh, for, for modern adaptive reasons they would cut big doors down at the ground level so they could drive tractors in when baled hay became the method of hay because this barn was built in the early 1860s and at that time it was all loose hay, loose hay harvesting and storage. So here's the, on West 4th Street, the Capurro or Durkee uh, barn and just a little photography story. I was having lunch with my dad at the Gold and Silver and I heard the train and I had my camera and tripod in my truck. I heard the train going by and I just went, see you, dad. And I jumped in my truck and I raced down West 4th Street. I beat the train, got my tripod set up, and I had the camera ready. And I originally com composed this to have the barn in the, on the right and the front of the train coming in on the left. And I had a shutter release cable. And when I went to go click, it was jammed. And I went, ah. Oh. And so I thought, well, actually, it's a long train. I thought about it. The cars are going by. I readjusted my camera and I thought I'll get the end of the train and I had one chance and went click and I got it. And so that was quite the lucky shot actually. But, uh, trains and barns are, are both really cool things. So uh, this is the Holcomb Ranch out on uh, Holcomb Lane that, out in the South Truckee Meadows. And it, this one, uh, I'll introduce the concept. It's a gable with a slightly broken wings. And this is the Jones Ranch. This is one of the, and of course, Slide Mountain in the background. This is way out on Clean Water Way. And I'm actually on the Sparks side of the Truckee River, shooting across the Truckee River towards Slide Mountain. There is a, a thesis written, and I forgot her name, uh, about the history of the Jones Ranch. And she had found deeds of record that actually described the barn being built in 1865. And what was unique about that is most of the barns were not on any kind of records. They were just a utility and they, houses typically were on deed of record. So it's kind of hard to dig, dig up concrete uh, record of barns, but here's this one barn that did have deed or it was mentioned that early in 1865. And, and so it supports that time frame of when these, these buildings were, were built. And of course we have the gable with wings. And this is a close-up of the siding of that Jones barn. And note, uh, in the center is a batten. That's a thin strip of wood that was applied later over the cracks, the crack 
that developed between the original two pieces of wood siding. And notice off to the right and off to the left, the nails are square nails. And notice the batten in the center is held on by round nails. Well, it's like barn forensics. This tells a story. Uh, square nails in general in Nevada are indicative of construction prior to approximately 1880. It's just kind of a general rule of thumb. And so here uh, we, we know this barn was built in 1865 and indeed they used square nails. And so the, the boards were young in 1865. They put them edge to edge. There probably wasn't much of a crack. And then of course, uh, a little, uh, some years go on and the boards will shrink a little bit and that crack will expand. And then they had the concept of adding the batten later to fill in the crack. And it's just a, a simple form of insulation. But that, just that little photograph tells that big of a story. And uh, so Nevada Outback, and this is just a general overview of places beyond our big urban area in the north. So I have Smith Valley, and I just have a scenic here just to give you some context. And um, here's a little building I found out there in Smith Valley that they're obviously moving. And that's just a foreshadowing of my story about us moving the buildings to Bartley Ranch Park. But it brings about the point that a lot of these little buildings, instead of being torn down, uh, can be moved. They, they can be rescued or, or preserved. And it's really not that difficult to move them. And so, and what's nice about this building too, and I'll, I'll emphasize it later also, is the, the good roof. Look how good that roof is, and that's key. And so here's a, a barn, very large timber frame barn along Desert Creek uh, out of Smith Valley in Lyon County. And then here's a barn near Wellington in Smith Valley. And now we're gonna move to Lovelock area. And so here's uh, just a little scenic in Lovelock area, just to give you some context. And here's some shots of a couple of barns. And these are both gable with broken wing barns. And so we, we talk about gable with wings and gable with broken wings. And you see the concept of the broken wing. It's just those wings are set down a little lower. And, uh, and there's another shot. And, uh, nice dramatic skies. And there's uh, some nice snow, snow up on Star Peak in the Humboldt Range. So Lovelock again. And look at the cupolas, the vents, the vents up on top of that roof. And uh, that is an original roof there. They have not put any of the metal corrugation that you see uh, in a lot of these photographs. So there's a story right there. Uh, almost all of these structures would have originally had shingles like this barn. And then later on, they added the corrugated tin and then the corrugated tin uh, rusted. So you see that uh, tin roof rusted and this barn never uh, never received the corrugated tin. And now we're moving on to Garrington, just a scenic to give you context and another shot of a big bull out there in the field and a, a shot of just a little, it's a cattle cattle uh, shelter at a ranch. And, and I don't have a lot of shots in the Mason Valley, but it's just pointing out that uh, Mason Valley is beautiful and a lot of beautiful ranch country worth exploring. And then Alpine Ranch in Edwards Creek Valley this, this barn was actually a, a livery stable for the stagecoach operations that occurred uh, in the late 1850s and early 1860s before the uh, telegraph and the railroad were established. And so the uh, mode of transportation was Pony Express and stagecoach across central Nevada, which is the Highway 50 corridor. And there were these big stables, libraries out there for fresh horses and blacksmithing to keep the stagecoaches going. And so here's a building, Squaw Valley uh, in, in Elko County. And uh, this is Soldier Meadows in Humboldt County. And this is interesting, this barn is constructed of stone. A, way out in Humboldt County, there's not a, a lot of big timber. And so this structure is a stone structure. And then there are, are smaller timbers for the roof and the, and the gates. And here's a River Ranch, Quinn River Valley. And again, here is a barn that never received the corrugated tin. And it has its beautiful, uh, original, very uh, erratic, if you will, shapes and sizes. They probably have patched it over the years, but that's a, a very beautiful uh, shingle roofed barn. And here's the Lampa Ranch near Carson City. And then a little story, we got the Winters Ranch, Washa Valley. And this is a photo 
that was taken by Lyle Ball around 1970. And Lyle Ball was a photographer and artist, local artist, very well known. And, and one of his favorite subject materials were, were the old barns. And then, uh, and part of my point here, uh, this would have been a shingle roof barn originally, and then it had tin uh, added to the roof. And you can see that the wind is ripping off the, that roof there at that corner. And here is just my, my point that uh, keeping a good roof on a structure like this is, uh, is key. And it's really almost the, the number one maintenance uh, that you can give to a building is uh, just keeping a good roof. And that applies to your house too. So timber framing. And so here's a, a historical photo. I actually, seems like I found this photo in the Humboldt County Museum, but I'm not sure why. But anyway, it's just a photo demonstrating uh, a barn raising day and uh, a big gathering of folks from around and uh, putting up the barn and they each uh, might segment of a barn structure is called a bent and you've got your post and beam construction uh, mortise and tenon joinery with wooden pins you have braces the angling uh, braces so you've got all those pieces so here is are some examples of some local timber frame barns this is the byington ranch near genoa and up in the upper center where the post comes up and makes contact you can see a joint with a pin and that's called a double bladed scarf joint and we'll, we'll talk hopefully more about some scarf joints and if you move down where the angled braces at, meet into the post you can see the two wooden pins sticking out and so that's a mortise and tenon joint and we'll see that some more and uh, here's another Carson Valley barn and a slightly different style of post and beam construction I'll go back to the this one and see how that one was constructed and you see how this one con was constructed. So there were different styles and it's theorized that, so we had the Comstock load, we had Virginia City, we're talking maybe 1860. There are all kinds of people immigrating from Europe or, or the Eastern United States, moving to the big gold and silver rush in Virginia City. Some of these people are, are well-trained in timber framing techniques. So there are people employed in the mines to build timber framed buildings, the mills, the square set timbering in the mines. So we have these experts at timber framing. So they're going out into the valleys where these ranches are being built. And they're also building barns for the ranches. And we have different ethnic groups. We have Germans, we have English, we have Swiss. You have these different European ethnics. And so they are bringing different techniques that they have brought from the old home. And so a German built barn is slightly different than an English built barn. And so here today in Carson Valley, you can go from barn to barn and you see these slightly different te construction techniques and there's an, an ethnicity an ethnicity to that. And then you can also go from barn to barn and it'll be exactly the same. And you can theorize that, oh, I bet the same work crew built that barn, built those two barns. And it was a different work crew that built that other barn because it's built differently. And so here's another uh, mortise and tenon joint in the Dangberg barn and you can see that post and beam and, and the mortise and the tenon coming all the way through that post and then the, the wooden, the three wooden pins holding that mortise and tenon joint together. And so here's a, the Mayberry barn again. The Mayberry barn is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's huge. It's a, I think it's 96 feet long and 64 feet wide. Uh, we could probably fit three of our houses inside this barn. It's just, it's a huge, and the timber framing is absolutely fantastic, uh, as you can see. And uh, in this barn dates back uh, 1860 time frame. And there's a huge history of that ranch site, which I could give a whole slideshow on. So hewn. So here's a, a shot of a barn up at Doyle, California, and just a close up of the hewn timbers. So we have a post and a beam, uh, hewn uh, by hand, and then that mortise and tenon joint with those wooden pins holding that joint together. And one of the emphasis is, a thing to emphasize here, a mortise and tenon joint is held together by wood of the exact same material and the exact same pH. So there is no pH difference. And when you have zero pH, you have zero decay. When you have two materials in contact that have a large pH difference, there's an immediate decay. And 
this is my tongue in cheek joke about modern code because how many barns, modern pole barns have you been in or modern buildings where you see wood being held together by metal braces and you can already see the rust, sort of the rust marks on the wood or the streaks on the wood. Has anybody noticed that? I have. And that is decay. And so uh, that's because the metal uh, that they use for modern code holding wooden pieces together is really not the best idea. Uh, you're, you're instituting uh, a pH difference. You're, in, you're in, instilling a degree of pH decay. And so here in this photograph, we have a 160 year old uh, construction joint that has absolutely no decay. You notice that? And so this is one of the reasons why in Europe, uh, there are buildings, there are timber frame buildings like this that are th uh, 2000 years old, uh, as long as they keep that good roof on them. And here's a beautiful, uh, unique joint and it's called a scarf joint and it's actually angled. Uh, if you can just kind of study that a little bit, it takes a, a several angle changes and that's, it allows that beam to lock into itself. And then you have a tapered key through a hole and they pound that key right through a hole there to really lock in that scarf joint. And that makes a very strong joint and again, neutral pH and just keep a good roof so there's no moisture and you'll have no decay. And so here's a shot of the Willow Creek Ranch barn at Doyle. Uh, just a side story, a, a contractor got a hold of me. This was in 2002 and had heard that I liked to document uh, barns. And so they were tearing this barn down, but they were utilizing all of the materials in fancy homes up at Incoin <laughs> Village. So literally for about two months in a row, every Saturday morning at like four in the morning, I'd get up and drive to Doyle. For those of you that don't know, it's about 50 miles north of Reno and uh, would photograph and, and every time I went up there they had dismantled the barn more and more and more and it let more light in and so at this point the whole uh, wing to the right had been removed or the siding and was letting this beautiful morning light in on these this framing and I was using and I was using slide film at that time and uh, you can see that's how I was able to get that cool definition of light uh, anyway a unique experience. And so here's that same barn as they're continuing to dismantle. And again, uh, look how huge this barn is. So barn humanity, uh, positively no smoking or uh, near or in this barn. And uh, this is Dallas Byington near Genoa. And I, I just call this break time with a friend. He's uh, petting his dog. And then Ed Sarman uh, in Carson Valley. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, Ed, Ed, since I took this photograph, has passed away, and I, get, I shared this photograph, a print of it, with the family as soon as I took the photograph, and then uh, Ed, some years later, passed away, and they used this photograph as, as a primary, like, announcement and memorial at his, at his uh, memorial service, and I thought, that's cool. Uh, I think Ed uh, was, I, I interviewed Ed, I, I spent a half a day with Ed, with his barn, and, and he loved his barn, and so this, this is what he chose to use at his memorial service. And that's kind of a touching uh, tribute there for Ed. And then this is my buddy, Lauren John. And uh, everybody's heard of Lauren. Uh, Lauren has volunteered at the State Railroad Museum since he was 19 years old. He and I are the exact same years, uh, same age, uh, 55. And then Lauren's my, uh, we get in trouble. Uh, we, we, we go around saving barns and that's what we do. And then we, we call it barn spelunking. And uh, so it was kind of a, a a partner in crime. And there's his little boy, Corby, and we're up in the loft and, and we got permission to go uh, climb around in the Scasa barn in Carson Valley. C C Corby's now, I think, 25 years old and in college and you know how that goes. And, and so that's, that gives me the time frame. And then this is a friend of mine, John J.O. He's a real cowboy and, and I got a shot of him up in Modoc County, uh, stepping into a big barn up there. And then livestock. And so uh, this is just a uh, shots of livestock. Of course, barns are home for livestock. And uh, I just call this chocolate and vanilla swirl. And then of course, uh, the barn yard can be staging area for branding and, and roping and doing what you do on ranch. And so they're, they're roping and branding some calves here. And this, is, this tells a story, this is an old barn. And 
that's a sill beam. So that's a, a large beam that's in contact with the ground and it's structural. So it's, it's structural along the floor of the barn. And, year, and this is the entryway into the stalls for the horses. So in an old historical barn like this, the configuration would, uh, would be the central gable was for storing the loose hay. So from peak of the gable down to the floor, they would load up loose hay for winter hay storage. And there would be a right wing and a left wing. One of the wings would be uh, feeding crib, cribs for uh, feeding cattle and cattle could come and go and they could drop the hay into the, uh, the cribs for feeding. Uh, on the other wing, there would be stalls for the workhorses because these barns were constructed during horse-drawn era. And so all the mechanization, uh, uh, the hay cutters, the wagons were all horse-drawn. So you had to have facility for the horses. So the other wing was uh, hay, was stall, were stalls for the horses. So this is years and years and years of horses being led in and out of the wing of the barn and their toes clipping on the sill of that beam and wearing it down. And so there's a, a story right there. And so here is that exact same barn with the horse stalls. This is uh, just another outbuilding. I just think it's comical. The, the cat seems very content uh, in, his, in his or her barnyard. And this is out in uh, Elko County. And this is Humboldt County. And I joke the hay is always greener on the other side of the fence and a barn owl. And this is a great horned owl at the Mayberry barn. Part of the barn, a barbed wire, but the beautiful weathered sun beat. That's one good thing about Nevada sun is it leaves a beautiful patina after years and years and years on, on old wood and even old steel. This is in the entryway, the beam overhead when you enter the Sarman barn, that was Ed Sarman, remember him. It says ML Norton's barbed wire liniment, a positive cure for all outward ailments on man or beast if used according to directions on bottles, sold by dealers. So this is in hilarious to me actually. It was literally a salesman uh, traveling around on the, in his buggy, probably, selling his tonic from ranch to ranch and probably got permission from the rancher to put this advertisement on the beam in the entryway of the barn. And so when they say snake, snake oil salesman, there you go. And this is graffiti. This is just simple graffiti inside a barn, and it's just a, a rider. It almost looks like the rider's on a mule but, uh, or a donkey. But, uh, and just a skull hanging on the side of a barn and the old horseshoes. And that's a, a piggy, a weather vane, and with a almost Nevada-esque uh, shotgun holes through the piggy. Nevada Barn Technology, and I, that's tongue-in-cheek, I'm just calling this Nevada Barn Technology, but it's just some of these simple vernacular connections made to hold doors, hold fences. This one I think is hilarious because you've got a stick touching the ground, going up, holding the top rung of the fence, and then the barbed wire going down with the horseshoe looped around the bottom rung of the fence. And if there are any of you engineers out there can do a, a, you know, a forces diagram on that, it's, it's pretty hilarious. I, I really like that. And this is a, a, a Jackson Fork. It's a version of a Jackson Fork. And this is what I meant going back to that Mayberry Barn where I showed you the big cutout at the base, a ground floor of the Mayberry Barn that's been cut out in recent years for tractors to drive into. So here's a different barn in Carson Valley. And this was the original loose hay way of getting inside the central aisle of the barn. Of course, they had small doors off to the side in there, but they would pull the hay wagon up, lower this down, scoop up a big scoop of hay, pull it back up and track it back in and dump the loose hay into that central aisle. And this photograph illustrates that. And this is the very barn in Doyle that I showed you earlier that was being torn down that I got the photographs. This is a 1911 <coughs> photograph of that barn. And here are, is the team of horses with the hay wagon 
Uh, they would have gone out in the field. They would have horse drawn, cut the hay with, with horse drawn hay cutters, loose hay. Uh, they would have gone up and scooped the loose hay up into a wagon and then brought it back to the barn and Jack, using Jackson forks, uh, pulled it up and into the barn and dropped it into the barn for loose hay storage uh, for the winter to feed the livestock. And here's an example of a, of a Jackson fork. And there's just another neat hand forged uh, by a, a, a blacksmith's hands, a very intricate device, really, with a little lock on there to just simply hold the door of a barn. And this is a, a hitching ring where you tie a horse to the side of the barn. And it's, again, another uh, simple blacksmith uh, made by hand a piece. And here's a, 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 a wheel a trolley for that suspends a, a door for a barn on a track. So you can just slide the barn door open and back. Here's another uh, close up of, you know, it might say vernacular barn door uh, hook and handle construction. And the hole, this is right at the corner of a barn and there's another hook if you reach in, that hook is reaching across to the other side of the barn or where the angle of the barn, it's a corner. And there's another hook you can reach in and un unhook that hook. It's a double hook entry. And this is frost on, a, on an old pulley. Oh, I just described uh, that earlier. Uh, it, this is the corner of a barn and apparently they didn't have room off to the left to put the hook, so they just devised this going across into the beam to the inside and have the hole so you can reach in. <clears throat> I think that's pretty neat. Doors. So here's some cross buck style doors at a barn in Smith Valley. <clears throat> this is the barn at Scassa, the, the Scassa barn in Carson Valley. Isn't that a beautiful barn door? Very ethnic. It's thought that they, they were Swiss uh, origin, and so there might even be sort of a ethnic statement about, about the construction of that, that barn door. And uh, just a simple entry into a barn there. Uh, this is a, there's a chute, it's a chute in, inside, there's a ramp and these little doors on the outside of the barn could open and you could back your, your wagon or your truck up to the back and, and take your sheep or your calves right up the ramp and into the back of your truck or wagon. And this is the Jones barn and I call that the Zorro door found an old barn. I, I, I gave this slideshow at, at about 20 years ago at the National Automobile Museum and immediately several people raised their hand and they, where did you see that? And I said, I won't tell you um, because I would like to protect the privacy of the private property owner for whom I had permission to go on to their property and take this photograph. But for obvious reasons, the folks at the National Automobile Museum wanted to know where that was, uh, but I, I was true to word and I did not tell them. Uh, here's a, um, a ironic side-by-side uh, uh, -side of two different eras of technology, of course, a rubber tire and then the old wagon wheel. And this, I joke, that barn was moving really fast when it hit that cowboy, but this are these are merely uh, harness racks inside the horse stall area of the Dangberg Ranch barn in Carson Valley. Wagon stories. Uh, the Chisholm wagon. So I just wanted to mention the Chisholm wagon. We, there's the lower right is Lauren up in the, the Chisholm wagon that we now have on display at Bartley Ranch Park in the carriage house. And uh, two summers ago, uh, De Debbie Hinman, uh, another fellow Harps member, and everybody knows Debbie, really into history. She emailed me. She said, you see this wagon for sale? And I was like, no. And so I called this guy and sure enough, he has this Chisholm ice cream wagon. And this is Chisholm ice cream from Reno. And here are a few other historical photos of the Chisholm ice cream activity here in Reno. And that's a whole other slideshow. Point being, Lauren and I roared out there, bought the wagon, drug it home, and, uh, and now it's on display at Bartley in the, in the carriage house. And um, and here we, we've had some open houses at Bartley Ranch Park. And one of the, this gentleman showed up and he's a descendant of the Chisholm family. And uh, there we, uh, is our Chisholm wagon. And it's sort of a foreshadowing of my story here about our buildings at, at Bartley Ranch Park. But moving on, and here's a, another story. If you look at the tree, there's a chassis 
around the tree. And that chassis probably was down on the ground when that tree was first sprouting up. And that tree is lifting the chassis of that wagon right up off the ground after all of these years. Okay, so recall the photograph of the Valley Road barn with the wagon up on the upper left. And so lower right, I have a story. Uh, I, when I was taking the photograph, upper left photograph, Mr. Raffetto kept asking me, do you want to buy that wagon? And he's, and I would say, well, how much? And he'd say 900. And I was like, ah, I don't really have $900. And, and so a couple of years went, and I'd always drive by because I just loved looking at this barn, even if, after I got that photograph. And one day I drove by and the wagon was gone. And it was like being sucker punched. And I called Alvin Raffetto and I go, what happened to the wagon? He goes, well, some guy bought it and took it away. And he goes, well, and he, he says, did you really want that wagon? And I, I said, I blew it. I completely blew it because you gave me the opportunity. And he said, well, that's no problem. I have another wagon out back. And he goes, just come on by after work. So boom, right after work that day, I was there. And he takes me way out back. And sure enough, here's <laughs> this wagon and in the lower right. And it was just buried with just bales of uh, baling wire and all kinds of stuff. And so we went out, a couple friends and I went over there and we uncovered it. And then Alvin hooked it up to his tractor and he drove it out and he parked it out in front of the barn and the hay boom. This is a hay derrick, this tall structure. And that is a structure that they would use to make haystacks out in the field, the loose haystacks. So you would load hay into the wagon, pulled by horses. You would have Jackson forks on the end of the boom. The horse, horsepower would pull by pulleys and cable and lift that boom. They would lower Jackson Forks, scoop up big scoops of hay, swing the boom around, dump the hay, and that's how they created the big haystacks out in the field. So every once in a while you see these hay, these old remnant hay derricks. So anyway, this presented a whole new photo opportunity for me. And I struck a deal with Alvin. I said, okay, I'll give you 300 bucks every month for three months. And we shook on it. And sure enough, after the third month, I gave him the $900 and the wagon was mine. And so in the meantime, I was able to swing by and get some photographs. And just for context, if you look off to the corner of the barn, you can see Harrah's Casino. That's how close we are to downtown to this old historic ranch. And so I give him the $900 and it's time to do what with the wagon? So I called my mom and I go, would you like a wagon in your front yard? And she says, sure. So my next phone call was Ace Towing, and so Ace Towing shows up, and we took the wagon, the hitch, the hitch of the wagon off, because the, the total length of this wagon is something like 22 feet long or something. And so uh, we, the, the Ace Towing guy shows up, and he's like, oh, okay, and he lo loads up the wagon, and he brings out his clipboard with the invoice, and he has to fill out the invoice. And so he's like, what's your name? And I'm like, Jack Hirsch. And he puts the date and he says, what kind of vehicle is this? And I said, Conestoga. And I, I, I go, I'm joking. I, it's not a Conestoga, but just, and he actually writes that. And so he's like, how do you spell Conestoga? And I'm just like, C-O-N-E-S-T-O-G-A, whatever. And he, he writes Conestoga wagon. And he goes, what color is this vehicle? And I said, wood grain. And he writes wood grain on the invoice. And so he, I sign it, he gives me my copy. And of course that was the official record, a Conestoga wagon with wood grain color. And off it goes to my mom's front yard where it was, where it was for many years. <laughs> and this is a picture of Grove Holcomb out in Holcomb Lane, uh, circa 1910, in front of the Holcomb barn in his little buggy and a two team horse. And so we did a reenactment with Bill Thornton because Grove Holcomb is Bill's great grandfather. And we restaged with Bill uh, parked in front with his modern Jitney and uh, other family members in front of the barn. And this is, you know, some uh, 97 or whatever years later. So anyway, Truckee Meadows Remembered. This is the name we give the nonprofit project for relocating the buildings to Bartley Ranch Park. And this photograph I found in the Humboldt County Museum, and it's just illustrating 
not only do we have the big, large uh, timber frame barns, but we have all these beautiful little outbuildings that accompanied uh, the ensemble at a historical ranch site. And so this is a chicken coop at Sod House. And you can see all the chickens and turkeys and geese and she, it's feed time. And there's even a pigeon that looks like coming down and flying in, almost ready to fly right into her. And up on the roof are some pigeons. And above her head, way up there in the peak of the gable, is a little triangular entryway with a little stoop. And they would, that's for the pigeons to go in and nest because they would actually harvest the egg and the baby pigeons and the poop for fertilizer in the garden. And so pigeons were actually utilized in these old farmscapes because at this time, you know, pioneers, they were utilizing every resource they could. And so here we are with the Joe Ferretto Ranch buildings that are now at Bartley Ranch Park. And this photograph was taken circa 1950. And this is another one of those photographs that was in the family photo album of Kathy Zugar, who grew up in Reno and discovered that these buildings still existed on that bus ride from the, the Nugget because she bought the little Turkey Meadows Remembered book at the Sparks Heritage Museum. And so this was in her family photo album, an in situ photograph of the buildings at, that are now at Bartley Ranch Park. And then towering above and be, beyond them is the big timber frame barn that used to be there. And for those of you that might have just tuned in and missed the beginning of the show, so this is where Lazy Boy and Ethan Allen Furniture Store are located. And, and we're, we're moving in onto the story of the buildings that are at Bartley Ranch Park that I helped rescue and relocate there. And so here we are, Bartley Ranch Park, nothing going on there. And so we lobbied with Washoe County Parks to, uh, we merely presented to them saying, we, we will do all the fundraising if you allow us to move these buildings to the park and set them up. So we, we went all the, through all the uh, uh, paperwork and red tape to make that happen. And then I did all the fundraising and I, 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 was ma I managed to raise $35,000 uh, to get this, to, to make this happen. And so this is December, 2004, after the buildings had been moved to Bartley Ranch Park. <clears throat> and I'll begin to introduce the buildings. On the very corner, you can just see the carriage house and then sort of front and center is the, the, the bunk house. And then the taller building is the chicken coop with the pigeon loft. So note the pigeon loft. And then there is the, the tool shed. And then a very small building in the distance off to the right of the tool shed is a very short lamb shack. And so we, these buildings had been at the Joe Ferretto Ranch. There were Lazy Boy, Ethan Allen furniture stores for like 160 years. They had been located there. They, they sprang up during the boom of Virginia City. They were in a big historical ranch that was producing goods for the market of Virginia City. The, the, the ranch changed hands uh, through a few different families over the years. The Ferretto, Joe, Joe Ferretto family owned it for, uh, for many years. So we, we referred to that ranch with that name. In the 1990s, when all that development was happening, uh, Boomtown picked these buildings up and moved them out to Boomtown and set them up in sort of a little uh, old western town display just, just for the fun of it uh, by one of their parking lots just to add some uh, scenery and um, romance to their, their setting out there. And they did that for several years and then they expanded and kind of gave up on that idea and they moved these buildings, uh, sort of discarded them out into a field which is where Cabela's is located now. And so the, the building sat there for several, several years, languishing. They were occupied by uh, transient people and it's a miracle they weren't burned down. Uh, the windows were completely busted out, the doors busted out. But Lauren John kept a dialogue with Boomtown, repeatedly asking them, please don't tear those down. Please don't, don't tear those down. Uh, Lauren took me out there and showed them to me, and I was like, oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this. We have to do something about this. And so that was the beginning of our initiative. And, uh, and Jack Sutton and Terry Sinar, Lauren John and myself uh, got on this initiative and we, we raised the money and uh, we lobbied with the Parks Department to relocate these buildings to Bartley Ranch. So this is May of 2004, where they're literally being moved from Boomtown to Bartley Ranch Park. And so when, once we got them there, we, Lauren and I have, a, uh, we sniffed out uh, 
old windows and we were able to find old windows that fit exactly in the buildings. And so we cleaned them up and repointed them, uh, put new glass and refitted them. And so here I am on the upper left uh, working on a window. And then the lower right is after we have installed, uh, you might say a, rest, a restoration, a, a, an arrested decay type restoration of an old window into the bunkhouse. And then there's Lauren. We got permission from various properties around the area to go and salvage materials because we needed old wood, we needed uh, rusty corrugated tin, and we put new rusty old rusty corrugated tin on the roofs of the buildings and did some patchwork with old wood. <clears throat> and you, here you can see it's uh, starting to take shape. We had that buggy on display for many years in the carriage house, but as I mentioned earlier, the Chisholm ice cream wagon is on display. So again, on the far right is the uh, chicken coop and pigeon loft, the uh, bunkhouse and the carriage house. <clears throat> Here's an inside shot of uh, artifacts uh, that we have been donated to us. We, the phone was ringing off the hook. There was an article in the Reno Gazette Journal in May of 2004, illustrating our, our moving the buildings to the park and our effort to preserve them. And people from the community just started calling us and I've got this we want to give you and we'd run and pick it up and then we would swing by the park and there would be things just laying at the door of the bunkhouse. So we just decorated the buildings with the appropriate items and so today we've got the really nicely decorated buildings. And we have, uh, you know, during normal times we have uh, events, the park has events and we run out there and we open up the buildings and we, we docent the buildings and interpret the history. And this is the carriage house. Another shot of the carriage house and the carriage house. Okay, the pigeon loft. Remember I talked about that pigeon loft. So the pigeon mo pigeons moved right in as soon as we uh, got that building moved into Bartley Ranch Park. And of course we have an outhouse. And here's a picture of Terry Sinar in, in memoriam. Uh, we've lost Terry since that happened, but here, here Terry, was a chief executive officer of the outhouse restoration. And you can see Lauren in the background. And that outhouse came from the Floyd Flannery Ranch over in Sparks when they're widening Bering Boulevard and, and, and it would have gotten wiped out. And Lauren literally loaded up a trailer, went over there and they just threw the outhouse on the trailer and Lauren <clears throat> drove it back and we built a foundation, poured some concrete, some ties, and we tied that little outhouse right down to a foundation and did a little patch patchwork on it and it's as good as gold and this is a, a random photo and the, the outhouse is a two-holer and one day we were out there working on the buildings and this jovial couple just happened to walk by and I said can I take a picture of you too and, and we have some corn cobs in there and so they posed inside the outhouse with the corn cob and uh, and what's funny is two two summers ago this this photograph is taken maybe 15 years ago, uh, two summers ago, I gave a slideshow, this slideshow at Bartley Ranch Park, and that woman was in the audience, and she had no idea, and I had no idea, and here I show this photograph, and she just screams, you know, she's like, oh my god, anyway, uh, just a funny coincidence, and here we're doing some cleanup inside the buildings, we do an annual spring cleaning, and then we've had some events, fourth grade history tour, uh, the uh, Our Lady of Snow's fourth grade, uh, they really give uh, or sort of emphasize history in fourth grade in local schools. And so we've had some field trips out there and we've docented for the fourth graders. And they, this was a, a funny photo because they were just all standing there, relaxed and just hanging out. And I walked up with my camera and I said, okay guys, on the count of three, I want you to just give me a goofy face. And I go one, two, three, and went click. And this is what I got. And study every single photograph here. It could not be better. Look how goofy faced they all are. And it was that spontaneous. <laughs> this photograph completely cracks me up. And so it was just one of our uh, open house days tours at, at Bartley Ranch Park with the old buildings. And here we had fall festival at the Bartley Ranch Park and some of the students coming by as well on tour and uh, all festival. And, and we had uh, deputy docents uh, for the buildings that day and some uh, other deputy docents uh, just coming and visiting at the hitching post. 
And then this character uh, just jumped right up onto the pitching post and I caught that shot of him. And this is really cute. Um, just one day, Lauren and I were out there working at, on the buildings and Bruce Robison, I had never met him. He just comes driving up in his old, super old Ford truck and he pulls right up next to the buildings and he jumps out and he comes over and he's just, he starts talking to us and we're like, hey, and, <clears throat> and he starts telling us that he used to work at this ranch at Bartley Ranch for Gus Bartley. And we're just going, no way. And so Bruce hung out with us all day long, just telling stories and telling us where the original buildings had been and where the bullpen was and all that. And <clears throat> Bruce repeatedly, all the rest of that summer and actually for a couple of summers, we would call him and say, hey, Bruce, we're, go Bruce, we're going out to the park today, join us and he'd be there. And Bruce would bring stuff for us. And he brought us this blacksmith forge one day in the back of his truck and he unloads it out of the back of his truck and we we have it on in on display there and uh he was very proud of that he used to use that and um so this is the lamb shack and it came from the uh, a ranch out in sparks and it was going to going to be torn down and so lauren and i did a restoration on the roof of the lamb shack so this was a little shack that would have been out in a field for a lamb or for a, a mama sheep to go into for some protection while she is giving birth to the lamb. And so uh, that's our lamb shack. And here we're putting the rusty corrugated tin to be authentic. And so I'm kind of sliding into home plate. I was just gonna give a little brief history here on Bartley Ranch Park. Uh, these are some historical photos that I, of the Rossi family, John and Delia Rossi, uh, circa 1919. And the, the White House in the lower left is where the Western Heritage Interpretive Center is now at Bartley. And so you can see in the upper photos, there are a couple of original structures uh, that are no, that are not there at, the, at this time. Uh, they, were they were torn down, but uh, just a couple of historical fo photos from Bartley Ranch er 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 location in 1919. And this is my estimated ownership sequence. And it gives you an idea of a sequence of ownership for a ranch in the Truckee Meadows. So of course, eight, Prior to 1860s, the Washoe Tribe, and 1860s and 1900s, um, Myron Lake, 1900s to 1920, John and Delia Rossi, 1920s to 1930s, Daniel Carroll Wheeler, 1930s, 1960s, Leo and Lina Biscaglia, and then they changed their name to, and those were the, the Gus Bartley's parents, and then Gus inherited and, and operated 1960, 1980s, and Gus changed his name to, uh, to try to be more American sounding. So they changed from Biscaglia to Bartley and then 1980s to the present Washoe County Parks. So, I, and I, I illustrate this to give you an idea of exactly how complex really the history really is of all of these ranch sites that I've, I've shown you here. There are many, many layers because we've had 160 years go by and in that 160 years, you can have several families that have occupied and owned that property. And so it's really a can of worms if you really want to dig into it. And so uh, Lamb Shack visitors, and I'm, I'm sorry, these are my closing slides just because this is so cute. Uh, Lamb Shack visitors in recent times at Bartley Ranch Park. And this, this signifies the end. And this is just illustrating a couple of books that you can maybe find and I know Truckee Meadows remembered it should be available at the truck at the Nevada Historical Society bookstore and I, I know I'm supposed to get it down to the Sparks Heritage Museum as well and there's my email jack.hirsch at gmail.com and I do have a website uh, for Truckee Meadows Remembered and it's www.truckeemeadowsremembered.com and there's an email there, info at truckymeadowsremember.com. So you can almost revisit everything I've told you uh, on that website with uh, lots of photos and basic history of the buildings at Bartley Ranch Park and uh, local barns. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Jack. Hello. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Jack. Um, <laughs> Hello. A couple of questions here for you. Sure. Um, do you, um, how many of those barns that you photographed do you think still exist? A, a great majority of have been torn down. And I, this time frame that I was photographing started in, in around the 1990s. And so there are just a few left. Uh, 
just to two or three out of maybe 20, if you want a, a number. Right, right. And are some still, are they still in use as barns or are they just being- uh, Most of them have down? had a sort of a degree of adaptive reuse. Uh, there's, there are a couple of them in the, in the South Truckee Meadows that are used as uh, studios or, or adaptive uh, living quarters. So there, there are a couple of them that are still in, used as a barn, as barns for livestock. And then um, a couple of them have actually succumbed to weathering and lack of, uh, of maintenance. And so they're falling apart, literally. And then a great deal, many of them have been replaced by new modern development. Have you plans for any more buildings at Bartley? Not really. The, <laughs> the process that we had to go through already 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, uh, was somewhat difficult, you might say. And the atmosphere is so much more difficult these days. Uh, we were able to get contractors to help us 20 years ago. Uh, and it would be impossible to get it done. They're, they're so busy. And then the, the red tape, you might say, involved uh, was uh, exhausting, put it that way. And so me personally, I don't really want to go through that again. And so I'm really happy with what we were able to achieve with the, that set of buildings that are, now exist at Bartley Ranch Park, and I don't care to go through that again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks, Jack. I have a comment from some people who live in Lewis Lakeside and Bartley Ranch, and they say thank you because it's very special for them. Oh, I, I'm, that's, the, that's the best thing you could possibly say. That's, that's why we did it. We hope that everybody enjoys and appreciates those little buildings. I, I'm the same way. I drive out to Bartley and it's just, they're so nice to see there. Right. Yes, they are. And I know a lot of your photographs, you used to sell those um, as cards. Do you still do that? Are they available anywhere? Well, I could give a little plug for the artist co-op gallery on, on Mill Street, 629 Mill Street. I was a member for a number of years. I, I no longer am an active member. So I I really don't sell anything uh, if, you know, I guess by special request only if you're able to contact me, but that's about it. Right, right. And um, Carol has a question. Do you um, give, are you giving tours of Truckee Meadows Remembered at any time or at Bartley oh, Ranch yeah. for that matter? Yes. In fact, we do do that quite often. Uh, they're like Osher Life Learning Institute uh, has scheduled a tour and a lot of people know that as Ollie. And so that's a extended education programs. Uh, and so we, we do give special tours of the buildings of Barley Ranch uh, upon appointment, you might say. And so we are frequently asked by different organizations to do so. Right, good. And how can people help to preserve the historic structures like these barns? Have you any suggestions for that or constructive Ooh. advice? <laughs> yeah, boy, that's a tough one. The The atmosphere that we live in in, in the Reno area right now with the, the rapid development uh, and growth, it makes it a, a, a really hard fight. Uh, so a lot of things um, have to either be saved, moved, relocated, and it takes a, a, a huge effort to do that. And so uh, that's just a, a very difficult question to answer. Um, if, if you're in the right time and right location, the, one of the best things is just to, is maintenance if there is no development in the way. Uh, but development often uh, wins, wins out and, and you, lose, you lose these things. And that's a hard thing to fight against. But otherwise, just a maintenance, like a good roof and uh, some good siding uh, will we'll preserve a building for a long time. Good, thank you. And also again, who was the woman in the first picture? Was that Kathy Zuga? Oh yeah, well, no, that was Kathy Zugar's either mother or grandmother. So uh, yeah, so you're, you're close. And so I, um, I, I 
I completely went blank on the name. I, I used to, I would know it otherwise, but uh, it is uh, one of Kathy Zugar's uh, relatives. Right, right, good. Well, thank you, um, Jack. I don't think there are any more questions. Um, so I'd like to um, thank you on behalf of the Historical Society and also thank you from Washer County Library and I'll pass it back to the library. Okay, thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Linda Burke, Carol Coleman, and Jack Hirsch with the Nevada Historical Society and John, our Washoe County Tech Wizard for making this event possible. Don't forget to sign up for the next live event with the Nevada Historical Society on Tuesday, July 13th at 3 p.m. The topic again will be Herald's Club presented by Neil Cobb. To sign up, please visit events.washoecountylibrary.us. If you want to see what else is coming up, you can visit events.washoecountylibrary.us, where you can also access and download our virtual explorer, which is a publication listing of all our virtual events and resources. Thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Bye.